Part 5 of Chronicles. Um, I left off here with Jehu, and I was showing the King's List, uh, so I might as well show that right off in this video. These kings right now, these two are grouped with these right now, and we're now into this king here. It's very strange to see that it actually in correct order um, in this part that I'm going through. Last video in this. <coughs> Last bit. Um, sorry, I don't know what I'm feeling under the weather, but this is the first time I'm actually living close to the water here in Florida. And uh, we got that where they call it red tide or something in and when you're outside and you come in it, i don't know if it's affecting me then uh or what it's just supposed to be the respiratory system but you get a scratchy throat is the first sign of what's going on but i know the last video i was just didn't think i was good as i usually am in these videos and since you're new here, this new video, the blue text is being taken out. The green is what I'm adding. This I'm just showing. I'm changing one word to another word. And being that this one's close enough to mean it's not a house, but it's a family, I'm using the word family instead of the word house to be more correct. Uh, the yellow text is I'm adding completely, or I'm changing one word to another word that just needing a new word, but it would have been there maybe if it was truthful and they've changed it so that's just a way of me noting that um, a lot of times maybe I should just say that I'm adding that word too but I'm kind of replacing a word that was there and if you followed it all you'll see that um, that's what they had to do is change the words to and I'm changing them back to make this actually to find these formats these formats that you see this three verse is what I believe is the first writer's formats. And this is what was wrote in the scrolls. When they made the manuscripts, this is what they done to the text. They put their God and goddess into the text. And their belief into the text and got rid of our creator. Um, I needed to add the word leaders and caring for them uh, instead of ministering. Um, uh, they were, it's his sons that Jehu's going to go and kill off. So let me explain, let me get a map up here to show what's going on to the new group here in this video. Um, this one, Jehu is over here. He's going to be anointed and he's going to come back this way here. Well, when he finally killed the king, he went and found his sons over here. He sent them away, took them farther away from battle, didn't know if they were going to lose, and they were going to get wiped out, and Israel was going to lose, the uh, nation of Israel was going to lose more tribes or not. So he sent them to this city, and this is where Jehu is going to find those. It's not all, yeah, I had to put Jezreel because Samara, that's, where he killed the king. If he would have found him there, it would have been um, uh, too easy because I had to, because the word found is there, so he had to find them someplace. He knew they existed, um, but the object is is with the leaders, and I don't think this would. Oh, these guys end up being good guys. They agree with Jehu, so being under a king, you're supposed to follow what the king does, but. I'm using that as a capital L, meaning these are the good guys that uh, were caring for him. But when Jehu told him to turn them over, uh, they killed him and then they buried them because he was the grandson of this king here. And, of course, when I show you the king's list, um, these here, whoops. When I show the king's list, um, capital letters means that there were good guys, and then these are the bad guys, and he ended up being a bad guy. 
So the thing here is, is that's how this text, you can tell, read a little bit. These are Israel kings. These are uh, Judah kings. So, um, who they were grandsons. I had to add the word grand here to tell you, show this king, not this king. But he's there. This is uh, king for Judah. So descendants. Uh, on the list, when you see this list, uh, this blue line is where they were descended from. So it was, he killed off these this line here, lineage. And then Jehu's sons, he's pretty good. And then this guy gets corrupt, and this guy, and this guy. And it gets worse as it goes. But... I needed to add this just to keep the continuing uh, of the grouping of the format. So, but that's not really changing anything big. So it's not real important. And like I said, these stories that they add into here um, just don't make any sense because all of a sudden the text, I'm thinking a lot of times, I'm not sure if it's right now, I'm not thinking all that great today, that if you take that blue text out and the story just continues like that you, it's amazing that these formats just continue because sometimes two of these are grouped together to make a larger paragraph so when you see how they did write and you say well what about these formats you're coming up with actually in psalms um you can find these very easily and they got different styles in saw and psalms um, but 78 pretty much shows a two word grouping, two major words, one here, one here, even though I use this word a lot to do that. So it's like this one here. I didn't add because the word went, I'm using as the major word. Um, this I'm using as a smaller word to connect it and to connect the other verses. But what happens is these three verses will be a small paragraph. And a lot of times the next three actually make a bigger paragraph and then the subject changes. Okay. Um, the blue text, they're just adding things into it. And, I'm, and I know that I, when I, I can uh, do a lot of this to match the format and then it just, it doesn't connect as good as these verses connecting together. So that's why I get rid of, or I, I just know now to skip the text when I know it's the wrong, they're adding things. Um, example, burnt offering is really a sin offering. So why are you using the word burnt? That's af that's the effect of making the sin offer disappear or understanding that it's being forgiven and our creator's uh, going to forget it. It just disappears. It was such a visual to people at that time what was going on, our creator made sure visually things were happening. They said, okay, this is what's going on. Um, and this temple's for Ra that wasn't Baal or whatever. This is the sun god from Egypt. And they had temples to put their false god idols in. So never call our creator's house a temple. Like Temple Mount, people are just, they, uh, I get so mad at they're upset when I keep hearing that, and I know it's just being idiots not thinking what the word temple means and how it's used in the Hebrew text. The Hebrew text decides a lot what the words mean uh, and how they're used. So, um, example, I think the first time we have temples uh, on, the he on the pagan side is when Philistines take... Um, uh, the chest from our creator, some would call it an ark, I call it a chest, it holds the Ten Commandments, and took it to their temple before their God. So their idol of Ra fell and beside it in the morning. But anyways, um, I think that's coming up here in another book. Yeah. But this is what Jehu does when he goes through. He's really 
and he killed their priests. Okay, that's why I think this guy's a good guy. He's actually following our creator's commandments that if you are creator, when you read the 12 commandments, and there's 12 of them, there they are. If you did not obey any of these, you were kicked out of the land, okay? So the thing here is the text doesn't say that, but that's the story we can get from the text that they were sent out from the land. So when you have these corrupt people not being removed from the land correctly because our creator gives them laws to even um, how to kill adulterers, how to kill uh, drunks, um, the thing here is, is didn't like corruption of his people. Uh, so all these should have been killed off, and that's what Jehu does. He starts going through the land and killing many of them. There's more text of him in another book that um, shows him how he tricked him in uh, Bethel, you know, which was a pagan uh, temple set up by Jehu, or Jeroboam, uh, and he kills them all, something like two, three hundred people at one time. Um, and it actually calls all the priests from Israel to celebrate, and then he kills them. A good guy, real good guy. Uh, don't need the word city when we know what city we're talking about. And he was anointed, that uh, his son is anointed. Like I said, I'm, oh, wait a second, this is. No, changing, no, okay, yes, yes, this is now on the Judah side, should have just went down here and read it, but um, like I said, they're all anointed, they just didn't become kings, they're anointed by our creator as going to be king. A lot of times when the king passed it on to his son, he just told him to anoint them. We don't have the text of actually um, of any prophet come and telling him which son is to be king next. They do know that they're supposed to keep it in David's line because the promise from David is his son's son will become their king in heaven. So all this, if you think there's a trinity you're making everybody a liar here for four or five hundred years how they understood what how they were supposed to live ever since david's time jesus coming so watch how you're saying trinity you're actually calling our creator a liar um they added this that's from our creator's hidden formats how i get these dates um, don't never is it usually mentioned who his mother is, so that just is not needed. And I'm using the word elders instead of officers. Um, oh, okay, yeah, because he's going to repair his house. Uh, Joash is going to restore his house. And what it means when it says restore, it's just that the wood deteriorates in the house and he's going to go and replace the wood in the house. And it would be the older ones that would be rejoicing uh, the way, like, yes, about time that our creator's house gets uh, refurbished. So that's why I'm using the word elders here because these guys just aren't partakers. Elders are the foremost. Um, leaders of families within families, but they're the ones that are supposed to pass down and make sure their descendants are onto our creator. So there's, when I'm saying elders here, I'm talking a lot of people in Judah uh, rejoicing. Um, get the right guy's name in here, gave orders. See here, they got jumped from this guy here, actually here, restore a house and it's not even 10, 10 12 verses and we've got another king doing this so um it just a lot of corruption in the text they're just trying to use the name to have this secret message sent to their followers 
and they don't care whether you are what you believe. And that's my job to correct it. Uh, that's why our Creator sent me. Jesus sent me. And there's actually verses in the Hebrew side and in, I think it's John, uh, about me. So, uh, restore, that should have an E here. Um, and he, he, okay, he's going to repair a lot of items. Because anything in bronze has to be the altars and their items. A lot of their stands, their wash bowls, their pails, their uh, uh, even the hooks that they're putting the mussels on to burn. Um, it, it's just that this was, um, he restored everything. I had to word, add the word everything, and that should just be... Because I know it says house of God, but it's just everything uh, according to the plans, not specification, but there are plans from King David is the one that um, designated the sizes and what what is to be what. Because um, a lot of times the beginning ones were made of wood and overlaid with bronze. Um but now they had more bronze. They made them completely out of bronze. I believe that's some of the items. So, um, and his sleep died in his sleep. Okay, I was going to say a lot of times they don't use the word die, and he's he just fell asleep and he's with his forefathers. Um, so had to add the word righteous. Had the word forefathers. Had to add the word sleep just to make, meet the format. I didn't see how I could use any word here, too, so I added this word. Um, what he did for Judah and for our Creator's house. So these two things he did for the people there and then uh, for the kingdom, for the nation Judah. Now we've got this king here, and this king is now after this guy. This guy, so this order of kings in order is really good here. Uh, it's staying there, and then I'm having to put him as the youngest, his youngest son, for the simple fact that when you see how many years he did rule, that his son can't. They started having sons at the age of maybe 15, 14, right then around there. And then they they married early in life. So to have this big spread of that and then him to have 20 years and then still him to be an elder when he passes away. An elder means older. And a lot of them passed away in their 60s to 70s which at that time was an exceptional long life for a person. Um, I think 50 years would have been common for most people. But when you figure out the kings of Israel, they did live extra long life. That's what made them special, that our Creator let them live longer. Um, so... Okay, I'm moving this verse up to here, so that's uh, just moving it so it reads correctly, or reads better. Um, here, I move this group up to here. I've got it highlighted so you know which where these, these two are connected. Had to add these words here, because we know that the where he's lived at. Uh, and a lot of times I'm using borrowing words from the other people. Uh, kings and how they wrote the text and some said that they lived in Jerusalem so I kept that basic so um, there, some would say he lived righteously uh, things like that but I kept it to the minimum so I'm not really trying to over add to the text here just the minimal uh, correctness that I can get here trying not to put too much influence into the text, even though I'm doing a lot of that. But 
I'm pretty sure all this text um, you'll understand. I've gone over words like that already. Um, slinging stones, I needed to add slinging stones down here. These are going to be inventions, not just invented, but they're inventions. These were new by skillful men to be put on the wall's walkway. And they're going to be put on the tower corners. If you have towers, you have to have a walkway to get from one tower to the other. Okay. This just is reasonably assumed when you understand the construction of what needs to be done. Because you couldn't have these shooting of arrows all stuck in the towers if you got the towers or slinging these great stones. You know that this is pretty a big item. Okay. So. Um, did they just place like here's the tower and these stones were slinging so they go like this to cross over because they can move them back and forth and then throw in the stones to cover that area and then the the shooting of arrows uh, those could have been set up off to the um, along the walkway uh, to where they're going to attack. So uh, that's what all this editing is about to get this to be correct and we understand what kind of fortifications were built at that time. Um, now Azer died. Now see, now this is now out of order. This is way out of order, I think. Nope. Okay, we skipped one. That's what's going on. We skipped a king here. We're going to this king, and then we're going to this king. So yes, some of the text is now going to get jumpy around here. We're going from this king to this king, but we missed a king here. This guy here is... Azar. So we missed the guy in between. Just like that. Bingo. Skipping around, using pieces that they only needed to make up their stories or what they needed to write. And again, I'm just adding this text to make the format. So, um, again, that's how I did the years. Uh, moved here from here. I just moved this up and I cleaned up the text here. And this is a lot of tribute in one year. Uh, but it is silver, so I think that's um, reasonable at this time. Uh, what did it had? It had uh, one hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, a thousand. I just chopped it down two hundred. Okay, to get this one one thousand, and that's kind of odd how it would be written. It would one uh, one thousand. They tr. They would have just wrote the word thousand. The word one here, I just don't understand uh, why that is done like that in this area right here. I just want to let you know that when you start studying why I split the words up, um, one one thousand. Um, I don't want to look it up. It's, anyways, added the word people. Because uh, that's who he built the cities for. And, okay, he's rebuilding the fortresses and towers. Um, not so much Jerusalem, but other cities now are starting to get actually built up. And then he was buried. And that's how quick this guy's lifetime went by here. Um, where is when it comes to understanding the chronicles, did they just put short list of uh kings as listing this is king, this was this guy died, this guy died, and then chronicles listed a more detailed story so they had books that they could go and reference really quick when people would ask the order. Um, because they're using these to teach their history to their people. So the thing there is is trying to understand how the books are made and built. Um, Chronicles, as you see, has got a lot of detail to it, but then this grouping of just one king to the next king, 
that to me sounds like um, the two books. A list of kings, da 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 in Chronicles, this is what they did so they could go look up and then go get the next scroll. Mm -hmm. Forsaken, abandoned, pretty much is the same word. Sometimes I use a theorist to come up with a, a better word for the meaning because forsaken doesn't really tell you that um, this guy is actually uh, going to lose a lot of land. He's He's going to lose all these, okay? Not these yet, but these. So when it comes down to uh, just the size of the territory that he did lose, um, it's going to be, I don't know if I've got a picture split here. No, but because in the, because in the book, the text mentions another king and then another these these three here are wiped out later next assyria comes down and takes them the first time and then when he returns and he's going to start getting into jerusalem he ends up taking these three and then going uh leaving because when you see the king's list again um It's these years that um, it was hard to figure out that there was no king for five years because it was kind of hot potch. And it was just when they took the captives, they didn't leave many behind. So then it was kind of like they didn't have a king. And then this guy somehow becomes the leader at that time. And he's leading over him, but he's not really ruling him as a king. But I've got him listed as a king. And he's there for nine years, and then Assyria comes back. So there's this group of what's going on in the text. And this is way down the list because we haven't even got to this king yet, and we're already talking, okay, we're talking about this king. So we missed over these guys here. This guy, um, he was corrupt as well. But the object here is this. Uh, the abandonment of our creator means that they all, I use that as the majority of the people all of a sudden abandoned, okay? Because there would be a few good people left because those were the ones going into captivity. Our creator spared their life. So when they're in another area, it wasn't just that they were evil. They were the ones that our creator spared, even though they're going to live in captivity um, then when they're in captivity, they get to talk about their creator and how he cast them out because um, we stopped believing him. Our king stopped believing. Um, you've got to put yourself back 3,000 years and how people thought. So um, in the way of life that happens back then. And then we have this new king, don't need all this extra crap added on to his name, king for Assyria, and then he come down and he's the one that battled with them. And here I've got his name down here, listed here. So we have this guy is battling here, and then this king is who's going to get this next group. And then all of uh, the nation of Israel has been taken into captivity okay and because i was showing you that list that list is not in the text i had to add all those groups that um in in this text to make it truthful because the text doesn't tell you what's going on but uh, yes they they lost that uh, became the downfall of most Israel, not all Israel, because like I said, those three other little areas, there's going to be another time that they come down and then they're going to lose because those other guys' names, not for the five years was unknown, but the guy for nine years, uh, he does show up as in the text as being there. So he's just not over, he's over the other three um, that weren't taken into captivity. So you can say that these were better and that had fallen away from our creator as much as those others did. 
Now, here we're going from a king. We're getting introduced to another king, so I had to add this guy's name. And that is according to this list here. Okay. Um, and our people in Judah, he ruled. Because if you put this verse here and you try to hook it to here, it works, but you don't know who he is. So I have to introduce this. And then to make the format, I had to add that. So, yes, I am pretty much made this so it hooks to this. Um, had to put the king's name here um, and now if you notice we just went from here now we're going way back up to here I believe yep now we're going I had to check the name here because I forgot no, we're down to here. Uh, we go in here, but these two nasty gentlemen here, they really get, he's going to actually be so much onto the female goddess that he carves his own image and sticks it in his meeting room to say, this is your God, and they makes his house a temple. So, but we skipped over those guys, and... Um, He's a real good guy because he's now going to repair the house and the courtyard um, and remove the uncleanness that I just mentioned that that other king puts in there. And the priests at that time were all against our creator because they were all for what he was doing because they made his son the, the, the king after him. Um, the priest had, the highest priest had control at that time of being corrupt so this is when you look at when did the manuscript start getting really corrupted that we have today it is going to start right in this area at this time um here and in here uh that's what's it's going to happen under him that they start doing this and then this guy goes ballistic even though it's his son then it's going to skip to his eldest son to be, uh, or his youngest, or a descendant from him to come down here, which probably been his youngest. Because this guy does 50 years, even though you don't see the 50 years spacing as that, don't worry about that. Um, I just need to put the lineage in here. And this, this width of here is not really exactly 35 years. I need to put these guys in here and adjust it for inside this time. So these are pretty much um, how to read this uh, king's list. Don't say that I got it out of order. This list would, yes, it would be very long. Uh, I, I shortened it up by just making sure that these kings were rust roughly in this age. If this was 52, yes, about 25 years, this guy came into king. And then he was there for 13 years, but he died, and this guy was king. It's very confusing, but uh, once you understand, it's just king where the other king was at, at what other time the king was living. So, um, and he done he had done evil. Well, yes, the kings before him, our fathers, but it wasn't our fathers; it was our kings. Um that were able to corrupt his um, house for meeting with him. And nor did I turn my face away from our creator. Uh, he's trying to return them. Uh, oh, this is, this is, this is good. Um, I don't know if I got, no, I'm not going to be able to get into it, but this guy is a good king. He's one, um, I mentioned way earlier in one of the videos how they're going to clean up the house and then they're going to celebrate um, passing over. And our Creator, those that came to the Passover, our Creator healed everybody at that time. And then they go out and they start cleaning up the rest of Judah. 
So the thing here is our Creator had given them signs that He exists by healing all of them. Uh, that if you can imagine it, uh, this king is going to call them. Uh, I will get there when I get there. I guess let's get let's get back to the story here, because um, the this is some of the best text around. Again, there, when these kings go and start cleaning things up, I'm, um, yeah, <laughs> okay. So, um, maybe you should have a little bit of enthusiasm when things are going right. Here. We're voting for the good guys here to stay in power, keep things close to our creator. Uh, return to Wivy. I had to add this name because who are they returning to? Um, and it's not a covenant, it's a promise. So I've been over that word so many times. And then a lot of this text is just garbage. I mean, it's just the inner part of the house. Come on now, there's the meeting room and then there's the storage room. Uh, but here they got an inner part of the house. It's not a courtyard, it's the court of the house. So you know, a house has a court inside it. So just added text. And I'm not sure if this is the right guy for this group of words. <laughs> but I'm but this is the um maybe this was when I was added in. These aren't needed anymore. Let's take them out. Because I'm I know I'm ahead of the scheme. When I go through I start making notes to myself to do so I should have removed that sorry about that um, and so this is where he's going to assemble the leaders and then they're going to offer a peace offering to return to our creator uh, that this king is well aware of what's going on and the story is good this, th there's a lot to be said about a few kings and uh, he decides to do Moses's job and anoints new uh, priests to get rid of the old priests okay so I have him doing the anointing just as Moses would the leader or the judge is to now anoint the priest so he's handpicking the good guys get rid of the corrupt guys and really cleaning up of uh, the crap that that uh, those two other kings put started corrupting everybody in Israel. Uh, in the courtyard and their altar. Yep. Um, the sin offerings were reestablished. Not that they were established, but they were reestablished. He's remaking the house more true to our Creator. So yes, he appointed the king priest, and then everybody started coming back. Um, and then this is the story I was getting to that Josiah went and heralded for everybody to come to his house and celebrate his passing over, and maybe. Yeah, to be near our creator, that's the best word I could put in here without with being truthful to meet the format. It wasn't celebrated in the second month. The Passover is the Passover. It's the first day of the year. Um, and it's because the priest and the king were evil. That's why they did not celebrate it. And... This is his, he, uh, he didn't make a proclamation. I'm saying he made a decree. Um, I have foreign kings doing proclamations, and they do a decree, but here I want to make sure that the, the word decree is used. Uh, and went out throughout Judah and to come and celebrate with him. And I will get to what happens because all this junk, if we take it out, the story is going to continue. So um, the object is, is 
again, this section is being added, but the story continues really good. Uh, he was sent these out, and they were runners that went to the cities. Whoops. Um, it should be like that. Okay, I'm going to continue in the next video here. Uh, hopefully, I have time to do that. My voice seems to be still good enough. And on the next video, I will explain more.